So this was before I think you had um, like this sense of leadership and like great ideas and stuff because. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's never been one of those things where I get a great idea and I'm like, crap, man. How am I going to get my wife on board with this? What mm -hmm. are we going to do? It's never been like a second thought for me. Like, oh, should you do this? Should you not do this? It was just like, I think we have so much trust and I just believed in your spirit and how you do things that it was like, all right, on to the next thing. It's not just something that you created out of thin air. It's something that we've lived to the core from even before I knew you. You know, you've lived that way and I've lived that way. And it's something like whether the wealthy way word didn't come about until that point. It's not something that's just like a gimmick of what you've created, but it's something that you've truly lived and proven out to be successful for literally every person. I have the most requested guest of all time. This person has been requested by so many people and she has been so difficult to get on. She is very busy. She has just such tough management and handlers and people around her, but we were able to book her. We were able to get her through for a very limited amount of time. I have none other than my wife, Mindy Pineda. What's up? What's up? Thank you for having me. Yeah, I think this was the <laughs> first time I, I've ever called you Mindy Pineda in my entire life, actually. I know. It took me back for a second. That's why I didn't know what to say. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if I called you Ryan, I think that would be... Um, just really awkward. Yeah. We use babe strictly. That's it. Bay or babe. That's yep. it. There's only, that's it. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. So, you know, the reason I want to have you on is because I already know you're going to bring the heat, but <laughs> also it just kind of fits in the theme of the wealthy way. Why I started in the beginning anyways, because you've been there kind of by my side through everything, helping me figure out this whole thing of the wealthy way. And, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much based on how we've chosen to live our lives, which is very different than I think most people. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, obviously every marriage is different, but we do things unconventionally, but um, in a way that I think could work for a lot of other marriages. Yeah. And we kind of have that model that would be good for other people to see in here. Yeah. Babe, I'm not going to call you Mindy. Okay. I think that's weird. Yeah. Let's keep it casual here. Yeah. Let's and keep real. it casual. <laughs> Um, not professional. So a lot of people see you on social media um, now. And for those who follow you, especially like the women, mm -hmm. they see you're into fashion now. You know, you're the mom of our two children. You know, James is about to be, you know, he's almost four here soon. Olivia is two. And a lot of people don't know how you even got to this point. They like you're you're a ghost. They don't know anything about you. Like they know my story. I've said it a million times. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell the people where you came from <laughs> and how we even got to this place? Where I came from? Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, my story is pretty simple. It's I don't think it's anything crazy, but um, I was born in Korea. Yep. And um, I'm actually from a military family. My dad was in the Air Force. Um, he was stationed over at Seoul. And that's where he met my mom. My mom's Korean. I feel like I have to say that because either people know well, you that. you look I'm, white. Yeah. They either think I look full white or they can tell that I'm half. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, we came to the States like shortly after that. And my my dad retired um, pretty quickly after that. So I, I grew up in Vegas pretty much my whole life. I mean, yeah. you know, well, since I was a baby. The, the crazy thing is... Your family, your parents, your mom and dad is just you, only child. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they bought a condo 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. They've literally lived in the same place for 30 years, this little two-bedroom condo. Yep. And we just recently bought them a house near our new house. Yeah. And it's the first time they've lived in a house for 30 years. It's so crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and it's, it's so cute because I'll get text messages from my dad saying, oh, I'm so excited to have a garage or like we have a little backyard. <laughs> their backyard is not big by any means, but they have like a patch of turf. They have a place for their garden. Um, so it's really sweet and cute to to see that because, yeah, they've I mean, I grew up in one place my entire life other than after yeah. I met you. Yeah. And then I grew up like six different houses. But <laughs> yeah, we changed houses every year to two years pretty yeah. much. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I, yeah, I pretty much grew up here. I went to all my schooling here. Um, you know, I just growing up, I did piano, I did dance, I did cheer. And then um, I did that in college, too. And then that's where my my story collides with you. And so. now the tornado, <laughs> the life changing event of meeting you. And now we're now I don't even know are. where it's going now. We're in a studio now. <laughs> yeah. So you and I met, as you said, um, you were a freshman at UNLV. Mm hmm. I had taken a year off of college because I, I, I was drafted by the Oakland A's and I was going to Cal State Northridge at the time. I got drafted my junior year and I only had a semester left because I, I got through um, college early. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I don't want to go back to Northridge for a semester. Like, I don't want to move to California. I live in Vegas. And mm -hmm. so I got Northridge to approve. Um, me going to UNLV for one semester, they would let me transfer my credits back. And so I needed to take like 16 credits. And so I literally took a year off and spent one year or one semester at UNLV. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to meet this <laughs> freshman. 18, my 18 year old self. <laughs> 18 year old Mindy. And um, the story of how he met is crazy because it is crazy. We, we ended up meeting at... Uh, a canoeing class. Mm -hmm. So there was this canoeing class that got you three credits. Like that's a full normal class. I know when I tell people <laughs> that um, they can't believe it. And I think now they've changed it to one credit or maybe even half of a credit. Yeah, like one credit would be a normal elective. Yeah, but this was a full legit credit. And all you had to do was spend three two days. days. Yeah, yeah, three days at the Hoover Dam canoeing. <laughs> Down and the Colorado River. And it was... I mean, we bonfired, we camped, like it was a good, I mean, it was a fun time and we got college credit for it. Oh, yeah, I would have did it for free. It was just fun. But the fact that he got three credits for it was crazy. But that was how we met. There was only like 10 people on that trip. Yeah. Well, what was crazier is that, um, you know, when we were picking these recreational classes, obviously we didn't know each other and we both signed up for rock climbing. You remember that? Yep. And we didn't know each other and we both saw the class and thought it would be cool. Um, but not enough people signed up for that class, so they closed it. What if you and I were the only two? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they would have be, been able to afford it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because we have to still, I mean, you still have to pay for the classes, but it wasn't really anything. And um, yeah, so that class closed and unknowingly, we both then had to go back and pick another recreational class. And so then we both picked canoeing too, which is... Which, by the way, when she says we both like... It might sound like we made this decision together. Like, no, I never met her. Yeah. She never met me. It just so happened I signed up for rock climbing. It just happened she did. We both got the the note that, hey, mm -hmm. this class is canceled, not knowing each other yet. And then we both just so happened to sign up yep. for the canoeing thing thereafter. And that was how we met. Yeah. And so either were, way, we were going to meet. I, yeah, we were going to meet. And there were other <laughs> classes you could pick from. I mean, there's a whole list of recreational classes. So the fact that we picked the same class first and second, you know. It sealed it. It's fake, You just baby. knew. <laughs> well, actually, I don't think you did know. So tell people how the... the okay, you want me to tell the truth? Because I was I was wondering if you were going to tell the story and, and spin it your way <laughs> on how you always I will, spin it. Well, as a good negotiator, I will um, let you set the tone and then You'll I will correct it. You'll chime in when you need yes. to. Um, yeah, so we... So before the class, actually, we had to meet... This is my first impression of you. And I don't know if I've... I'm sure I've told you this at some point, but... Okay, tell me. Um we had to meet on Tuesday night or Wednesday night, something like that, like to do a safety briefing. Um, I don't even know if you remember, but it was like an hour or two hours or something. I don't recall going, but OK. Yeah. So clearly I didn't like mm. get his attention at first. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I walked in and I saw you and you were we were sitting in the front, which is not something that I felt like you would do. No, I never sit in the front. Yeah, no. I always sit in the back. So I went to the back. Yep. I was with my friend at the time. I took the class with my friend. And um, yeah, you were wearing a snapback. I just I can't remember what else you were wearing, but that was totally my vibe and my type. You had it back. I had a hat. Yeah, you had a hat. A snapback <laughs> hat. If you wear a hat, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I have real, real high standards, guys. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So I saw, and obviously, you know, then I saw your face and your body, and I was like, "Woo, it's good. Um, it's cute." And 
That was it, though, because I feel like <laughs> <laughs> that was it. 18 year old me is just too shy. I'm not going to do anything. I felt I was pretty confident in myself, but not uh, that confident. So I saw you and I was like, oh, he's really cute. This is some eye candy for the trip. Nice. Love it. There we go. And um, that was it. So then, like, I think a few days later over the weekend was the trip. And we go, um, you know, we all get partnered up with different people. I remember you get partnered up with some other girl. And I was like, whatever, that's fine. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was with my friend. I'm like, dang, she's what a buzzkill. But um, yep. and yeah, and I remember, I don't even know why, because I don't think we had talked hardly ever, but we took a picture together. Our yep. first picture ever. You know who initiated that picture? me was it of course oh i don't remember you're too shy you wouldn't have did that <laughs> yeah i'm super shy um but yeah so we took a picture together we didn't really even know each other and normally couples take their first pick after they're dating not literally almost the first day that they meet prophecy <laughs> i knew <laughs> Um, so I didn't think that was awkward or anything. I just thought, you know, <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, sure, I'll take a picture. Oh, uh, yeah, so we took a picture and um, we do the trip, and the trip is so fun. It's like 10 of us. Um, I mean, I think I'm still Facebook friends with our instructor. I don't, I haven't talked to her, but um, the entire trip now, mind you, I'm 18, okay, and my friend's 18. We're kind of I'm 22. We're not all there. there. He's 22. He's a whole lot older, apparently, because the entire trip, um, him and this other guy, they're just calling us babies and making fun of us. And, you know, I feel like I have pretty thick skin that I can handle, you know, making fun and, po you know, all that stuff. Um, but when it's all day long, it's just like, come on, dude, get out of here. So I quickly realized that he was not my type. Mm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know. Uh, I'm not a baby. I'm 18 and quit making fun of me. And um, yeah, that was pretty much that. I kind of left it as, you know, you're cute, but I'm not into the whole like jock making fun of you know uh -huh. people all day long. And that was it. And I was like, we're just going to okay. part our ways. All right. So that that's one half of the story. So <laughs> well, me... we didn't get to the other half. The well, saving. Let me. Yeah. Let me talk <laughs> okay, about the other half of, half of the story. So. <laughs> You know, during this trip, um, these babies are going canoeing, you know, not really knowing anything. And they're always at the back. Yeah, like, we didn't be, know how Like to the stragglers uh, <laughs> holding everyone back. And I'm like, oh, man, what are these two doing? And sure enough, during one of their, you know, being in the back, somehow they tip their canoe. L listen, listen, I knew you were going to say that. And I just need to defend myself for one second. Because a boat came by the same time that we capsized, okay? So, you know, when a boat comes by and there are canoers or kayakers in the water, you're supposed to go slow so that the waves don't, you know, tip all of the people in the water. And um, this boat did not go slow. So our canoe, at the same time the wave came, we hit a rock or we hit the wall or something yeah. at the same time that the wave um, went under the canoe and so we yeah, completely yeah. flipped. I, it, for one, it doesn't really matter how it tipped. Okay? <laughs> uh, all that matters is the canoe tipped um, and they were going to die. It and was the most cold water I've ever it was been. Cold, I mean, and the current was strong. It was so strong. Like their canoe went flying yeah. like hundreds of yards yep. out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh boy, this is not going to be good. And I happen to be maybe a, front, a, a canoe or two ahead of them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, crap. So we turn around. We swim to go get them. They get on the side of our canoe. We bring them to shore. No, 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 no. Them. You're it's missing great. part of it. And I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So this was before I think you had um, like this sense of leadership and like great ideas and stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, because we, we obviously had our life vests on and everything, but we were in the water kind of like flailing our arms, not really knowing where we were going to go or what we were going to do because we were on the side of the mountain. So there was no place to you know, go get off and rest. Right. And um, so Ryan and his partner are trying to grab our canoe. They're trying to grab like all of our dry bags and stuff. And he's like, just swim across, like swim across. <laughs> and he's like, you guys can do it. It's not that far, you know. Um, and we're, you know, we don't 
we're not in the right state of mind. I'm borderline hypothermia at this point. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we got this. Okay. Now remember, he said the current's super strong. All right. Sure. And we're swimming and we're like, real. I'm putting everything I got. I'm freezing. I can't feel my legs <laughs> and I'm not going anywhere because I'm swimming and the current is keeping me in the exact same spot. And he's like, you guys got this. Go, go. Like, you're, you know, you, you can make it. And um, we ended up having to like let the current take us down to another portion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's saying because mm -hmm, he he just want you know you want to think that you saved. I us. did save you, but I I'm feel like I we I saved myself, and then you were there for support. <laughs> <laughs> I helped you save yourself. Yeah, essentially. Okay, whatever happened, I saved her, and so you know, <laughs> after that, you know, the trip ends. It's great, you know, to speed up the story because we could just debate about who saved too. But it's mm -hmm. clear that. I, I, whether I get full credit or not, I, there's partial credit for saving. So, um, as we go back, you know, after the trip, I'm like, I thought that went pretty well with her. <laughs> you know, that was my perception. I'm like, this girl is totally into me. And so <laughs> I sent her a message on Facebook because that's all there was at the time. Mm -hmm, Facebook and, messenger. you know, I sent her a message and, uh, essentially I'm just like trying to hang out with her and, Ironically, before this episode, we we went and looked back at our old Facebook messages. It was it was easy to find because we very rarely ever yeah. messaged each other. But mm -hmm. it was like, yeah, you know, almost 10 years ago, there's the message right there. It's me like saying something super cringe and just, <laughs> just like we need to pull up those receipts. Yeah, we don't need to do that. <laughs> um, Facebook should have like a log that deletes after a few years. No, because then we wouldn't be able to see all the all the cute things you used to send me. Right, right, right. So <laughs> anyways, we, I message you and I'm basically like trying to hang out and I don't remember if we did or not. I think you came over for like a party or something we had. It was your birthday a couple weeks later mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, let me take you to lunch for your birthday. And, mm -hmm. and what happened, babe? You said no. <laughs> for, and I just was like, that was weird. I thought everything was going so well. And then she said, no, that was totally unexpected. Yeah, the male perspective, guys. He just thinks one thing and I'm, you know. Well, okay, then what happened after that? Tell tell the people. <laughs> I love how our story is just back and forth about who's, you know, higher at the time. Um, yeah, so the reason I said no, I, you know, obviously it was 10 years ago, so it was so long that I can't even recall my, like, exact feelings. But, um I think, I mean, it was like a Wednesday. I had school that day. I was just kind of like, what am I going to do? I'm turning 19. Like, it's not like a holy grail number of celebrations. Um, and I didn't feel like I, you know, I was just kind of like, eh, you don't have to. Like, don't, it's not anything big. So, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And then a few days later, or maybe it was a week later, I can't remember, but, um, I just felt bad. And I was like, well, that was stupid. I I should probably just go to lunch. It's just casual lunch. Like, why did I, <laughs> you know, whatever. And so I messaged him back. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And I was like, hey, um, if the offer st is still there. <laughs> <laughs> she came crawling back. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say crawling, but, you know, it was just like, hey, she if you still back wanted with her to. hands open. She's like, hey, if you. I'm in if you're still available, you know, if you if you would have me, <laughs> I would go to lunch with you. And yeah. I said, OK, fine. Yeah. So we went to Olive Garden. <laughs> we did go to Olive Garden. <laughs> Olive Garden's great. Still and number one. We just talked about this, too. I don't remember <laughs> anything about the lunch. So it must not have been that great. It was great. Once again, <laughs> my perspective was it was great. I, I have no memory other than you walking to my car. I'm like, was the conversation good? What did I eat? Well, like, you were super uh, quiet. Yeah. As you always are even to this day. And True. um I remember you crushed your food. You like hammered it. I was well, like, wow. I always crush she, my she food. She finished the whole bowl of pasta, like <laughs> all the breadsticks, all the salad. That was crazy. I you know <laughs> Hopefully it was attractive. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, you know, we do that and then we start hanging out a little bit. And we were kind of talking about this before at dinner, but we were trying to think how long did we really kind of date for before we like became official mm. and we thought about it and we we're like it happened in like three weeks yeah it was so we we had this like um 
picture in our mind that was like, oh, it was like this long drawn out thing of just us going back and forth. And um, yeah, that turned out to be like three days in between each thing that's it happened. It felt so long. It felt so long, but it happened so fast. Yeah. So we, we hung out for like three weeks and then uh, we made it Facebook official. Mm -hmm. And then um, after a year of dating, we got engaged. Well, yeah, you left for baseball. So we did long distance for a bit. Yep. Then we got engaged, and then after a year of engagement, I, you know, I also again left, and then we got married. You yeah. had just turned twenty-one. Mm -hmm. I had this like idea in my head that I'm like, I want to be able to drink a beer at my wedding, <laughs> and I think I had like a sip because you know weddings are just crazy; they're busy. Yeah, and I think in hindsight, had I known that, we probably would have just got married like the same year we were dating. I mean, we really. Yeah, probably weren't waiting. We were honestly waiting for the off season, so we yeah, had it was to wait baseball like a that whole was the year. um the hold up. Yeah, WealthCon is coming to Hollywood. If you've ever been to any of my events, you know they're life changing. We get the best speakers, we have the best venues, we have the best parties, after parties, and networking that you could imagine. I've met so many people who ended up becoming business partners of mine at my events. I've made great relationships and the people who have attended have done the same. And so I wanna see you at my next one in Hollywood, California, April 4th to the 6th. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. We've got speakers like Chris Crone, Lewis House. We got Roe built from Bigger Pockets. The list goes on and on. We have a huge lineup of speakers and I want you to be there. So if you wanna attend the event and learn more, go to wealthcon.org. Once again, you can go to wealthcon.org and go learn more about the event and register today. So, you know, we get married, you're 21, I'm 24. Mm -hmm. At the time, you were going to school, not making any money, you were gonna become a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to still make it in baseball, but I was also just kind of finding myself as I wouldn't even say an entrepreneur. What was your perspective like during those days, like watching me trying to go make money? Um. Well, I mean, I feel like the focus was still a lot on baseball. And then once you got released, um, I just like vividly remember being like, oh, I don't think baseball's over for you. And it ended up being those next few years, some of the best seasons we've ever had. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I don't ever remember you trying to be like this, like entrepreneur, start your own business type thing. It was just kind of like do something in the meantime, not really sure what you want to do, but still play baseball and have that connection and tie and just kind of like go with the flow, which is kind of always how you've been. Yeah. Yeah. I just obviously we needed to make money because mm -hmm. you weren't making any and baseball wasn't really making any. Right. So. I was substitute teaching for probably, <laughs> what do you think, like a year? Yeah. Can you guys believe that? Ryan yeah. Pineda was substitute teaching. It would look just like this. I'd sit at a desk just like this <laughs> and I'd play on my laptop. And and the kids would just do whatever they wanted. The kids did whatever they wanted. He was that sub, guys. He was that sub. That was the cool sub. The cool sub. <laughs> and, you know, I, I did that. And we got married and all that. And so I was doing that while we were engaged too. Mm -hmm. um, but it was when we got married that I started to think about like what I could do differently because I was still a realtor too, but I hated that. I wasn't really good at it. And, you know, I go back to furnishing the apartment. When we finally got married, we got our own apartment. Yeah. I mean, we. I think that was a big key too, is I was still living with my parents. You were living with. Travis and I mean your cousin and everything so mm -hmm. there wasn't this like push yet even though we were dating um because we weren't living together so it wasn't like oh well I need to support her too you know or support like a family it was right. just kind of like you figuring that out and then once we got married and then got our apartment it was like oh wait there's like a whole <laughs> another person that yeah. <laughs> has to live your parents aren't taking care of you anymore and I gotta take care of you crap <laughs> <laughs> what am I gonna do yeah yeah, yeah and you that, I never thought about that, but that was probably what pushed me further mm -hmm. than um up to that point, like you said, I was just focused on playing baseball, making I was cool making peanuts. I didn't give a crap. Yeah, it was just fun. It was a fun time. We were young and so as we as we kind of progressed, what did you think when I finally started to be entrepreneurial and um 
when I started buying couches. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the couch fill flipping era. It's uh, I don't know. I just it, we've always had just good memories with every season that we've gone through. Um, you know when? Well, first of all, you started flipping couches when you realized after furnishing our apartment for like I don't even know a couple thousand dollars, like the entire apartment, everything was used that you bought off of um, Craigslist, and you're like well, wait a minute, I can, you know, flip this and make some money. And so you were flipping everything, not just couches. Yeah. I don't know if you tell people, but you like installed dishwasher, yeah, dishwashers, appliances. Um, I, like I probably, <laughs> there's probably at least a hundred houses that are hazards from, for sure that I installed because when I would install a dryer, right? It's gas here in Vegas, majority of them. I did not know about the gas tape or like the safety precautions. No, you were just hooking it up and leaving. Dude, I was like, <laughs> it's good. See ya. <laughs> and, and like installing these freaking washers and dryers mm -hmm. nonstop. Yeah. Putting together furniture if it didn't fit in the door or whatever. Like you were pretty handy. I know. We, <laughs> we say I'm not handy, but I was, I, you was, can get it I done. was pretty handy back in that era. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that was just honestly, um, like another journey that we went through. I, I loved hanging out with you while we did, you know, couch runs. And then when I was in school and you were doing it on your own or whatever, you know, we'd get that done or we would do it before date night. Um, we have that like one famous picture, mm -hmm. which is kind of upsetting because we didn't really take a lot of pictures back then. I, I regret that, that now obviously filming everything I do that, man, I wish I would have just filmed all that time. I was mm -hmm. flipping couches and making home videos, like just something. Yeah. But definitely regret that. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like also the times either, too. So there wasn't anything pushing anybody to to go film. Right. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was I have nothing but good memories. Um, I think the. I mean, you just kept bringing couches and couches. And at, at first it was nice because I'm like, oh, I can upgrade a couch. You know? <laughs> Here's a three hundred dollar couch. And now I can get yeah, a three switch couches. And we, we switch couches a lot because I'd, I'd get one. I'd be like, oh, she's going to like this one. <laughs> yeah. This is a good couch. Yeah. And I think that's also where like my love of design started and all that stuff, because, you know, we can just change our household furniture at any point. Um, but then it was just like okay, well, we have four couches in the garage and that's not going to work because you have to give your address to pick up the couches and people started coming in and out of the house. Um, and then, so, you know, I was just like, you can do whatever you want to do, but it's not going to be at the house. Right. And so you got your storage unit um, and then you got like two or three more after that mm -hmm. in the same. So you're like, Here, here's one set of couches you would show people. And then you're like, well, let's drive around to my other store. It's on the other side. And then, um, yeah, I mean, skyrocketed from there. Yeah. No, that was a fun era, just figuring out the couch flip. Mm -hmm. What did you think when I decided I want to get into house flipping? Um, well, that was when I feel like house flipping was not really a thing, but it was starting. And I think I just had this vision of like husband and wife duo, like <laughs> I'll design it, you flip it, you know, whatever. I think we both quickly learned that that's not how it goes. <laughs> no, no. And we can't work together. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, no, it was it was just the next journey. So yeah. I was like, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. I'll, I've always said, whatever you want to do, I'll support you from day one and until now. And it's never been like a second thought for me, like, oh, should you do this? Should you not do this? It was just like, I think we have so much trust and I just believed in your spirit and how you do things that it was like, all right, on to the next thing. Yeah. No, and I, I I agree with that. You know, it's never been one of those things where I get a great idea and I'm like, crap, man, how am I going to get my wife on board with this? What mm -hmm. are we going to do? Um, it's always like, all right, here's the plan. Here's yeah. what we got. And you're always like, all right, go for it. Good luck. Yep. And yeah, it makes, it makes being innovative and taking risk way easier when um, you don't have to fight all these things because you know even with the the whole house flipping story of the first time when we had to max out credit cards mm -hmm. you were never like oh this is risky don't do it you know i don't even remember you saying really much about it at all mm -hmm. yeah i don't i mean it was like i said another thing and i'm like yeah sure sounds good let's just do it i mean it's people, all good people hearing that might find it hard to believe for like, sure was there any 
doubt in your mind at all? So um, here's the thing is that I do get that question actually a lot um, whenever I meet a spouse of somebody who's an entrepreneur that wants to go all in or do something relatively risky. Um, I personally did not have any doubt. And let me tell you why. Um, I think when it it goes back to one, the trust factor of everything that you've done up to that point was successful or mildly successful or whatever. Um, but and this, I always did what I said I was going to do. Yeah. It was you, never like me saying, I'm going to do this. And then I just don't you never did. Through. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, hey, I'm going to do this. Here's the plan. And I'm like, cool. All right, let's do it. And there was a clear thought out thing of beginning to end on how you were going to execute it. And, um, you know, but the second real thing about it was that yeah it's so scary to um think about man if this goes wrong like we're gonna have nothing and I know it sounds cliche but it was just like well we've started from nothing and we've had each other if we end up back at nothing we'll still have each other like it's not if that's like what's gonna go wrong in this situation it's all good yeah it's you know? not even a thing yeah so that's the mindset that I've always had with even up to this point is that if we really lost everything or just a company went so south that we had to sell everything, it's like, well, we still have our family. And I know I'm sure people still won't believe that, but it's true to my core and what I believe. And, um, you know, it's just something that we've built together. And um, there's just so much, you know, love and trust between us that, that's just how it is for us. Yeah. No, and I agree. I agree. It's been um, way easier to innovate and do the things that, you know, I've been trying to do because of um, your support. Well, and let me say this, too. I think um, when we did that, we were young. It was just us, too. So who cares if we lost our you know apartment or whatever? We can figure it out together. Now, if I had kids at that point, would I have doubts? Probably. Yeah. Would I be afraid? For sure. Um, but to be honest, I think I still would just say, let's do it. Yeah. And I also think too, the, you know, c coming from, we didn't have a lot. There's nothing to lose. Right. Exactly. Yeah. When today you go and lose it all, it's different. You right. like got accustomed to this lifestyle and For you sure. have a lot to lose and you took a risk and lost. And now you're down. And so when I, whenever I hear per people who have like nothing and they're like, Oh, I'm scared to take the risk. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. What are you thinking? You're you have to... nothing to lose. Your yeah. life sucks right now. Right. You're going like, to go back to right where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Like now if you get further along in life and your life's pretty good and you're happy, yeah, it might not make sense to take such a crazy risk. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it also depends on what you've done before. Like you said, I mean, if you have a track record of just saying, that you're going to do something and you haven't or maybe you've done something and it's continued yeah failure you know maybe you have to approach it different differently maybe you can't just go all in um but i feel like for at least for you and for our story you know we've gone all in every time and yeah i there's never been one idea that i said here's the idea i'm gonna do this and it, i didn't do it mm -hmm. now granted has every idea been great no you know, there are ideas that don't work out the way that I would hope they work out, but I at least did it Yeah. and and found out whether or not it did. Um, and I think that's what you're trying to say to everyone is like, if you're one of these guys who's, I like to call them the dreamers, <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with having dreams and big visions, but mm -hmm. I don't want to hear you say it. I don't need to hear your affirmations. I'm a billionaire. I do this. Mm -hmm. I do that. No, you do it or you don't. Right. Do it. Yeah. You know, if and if you can't be a billionaire tomorrow, go tell me something you can do today. Yep. And so I've always been a realist with everything. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm about to do right now, this very moment. There is nothing stopping me from doing this right now other than me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love that. So I think it's important for people to hear, you know, it's like, oh, man, man, you guys have had an easy life. Well, <clears throat> you know, I think to a degree we've gone through tough things and made it seem easy. Mm -hmm. Whereas other people may have gone through similar things and, you know, it had them break um, it, you know, whatever. Right. Um, I think for us, the hardest time was in 2019 as, you know, my business has scaled, you know, we are making great money. 
we are millionaires and you know we have james Mm -hmm. and a lot of people may know this story but you know james my son um was born two months premature um you know we didn't know if he was gonna make it or not and when he was born he had to spend two months in the nicu Mm -hmm. you know we get him back we don't know how to be parents really scary Um, it was a scary time very scary you know and then just less than a year later you know he bumps his head he has a brain bleed he Mm -hmm. has to go in emergency brain surgery on christmas eve Mm -hmm. you know once again we don't know if he's going to make it and you know he pulls through and that's our first year as parents yeah i know looking (laughs) thinking about it and just looking back i really i mean when you when you just like say it like that and talk about it it's like dang we had a tough tough first year um and we you know are fortunate enough that have that we haven't had um like any problems in our marriage or anything but i feel like that time really was like okay this is a testament of how we can support each other um through something that's really just out of our control and i think that was the biggest thing that we had to learn is that all of this stuff you know happened by accident and well it happened you know, I, I firmly believe like in God's plan and everything for our lives, but, um, to really just teach us to grow closer together and grow closer to God and our faith, we didn't have anything that we could survive on without our faith. I mean, yeah, there was nothing we could do as parents to as people, as human, I mean, as anything, we literally could not do one thing about the situation. Yeah. And it was solely because we had to put our faith in God that we just got through all of that. Yeah. And I'll say it was also the roughest year ever for me in business because I was coming off my best year ever mm-hmm. up to that point in 2018. And then, you know, have a down year. We lose a bunch of money on bad deals with flips. Uh, my son's born. Mindy's having troubles being a stay at home mom now. You mm-hmm. know, you quit your job as a teacher for many years. And, James has all these therapies and appointments and, you know, all these special needs that he's got to go through. Um, And I just remember you came to me one day and you were like, hey, I just don't feel like you're here enough for me. Mm -hmm. And that kind of shook me because I'm like, in my mind, what do you mean? You know, I I'm here. I'm here at I don't work weekends. I to this point, I, you know, I, I make it this thing that I don't work weekends. Mm-hmm. Have I ever worked weekends? Like, period? Mm-mm. Yeah, I just never have wanted to. Uh, whether I was flipping couches or whether I was flipping house, I'm just like, I don't want to do it. Like, I'd rather just chill. Yeah, only when you had to play a Saturday night game and a Sunday day game. Baseball. Oh, and baseball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, what than, are you talking about? Yeah, you've worked so many weekends up to that point. That's why you're like, I'm not working. Weekends yeah, again. when you play every day in baseball. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that was like real tough for me. I feel like thinking back, I probably went through some kind of like postpartum depression for sure. And I don't know if that was like a factor of everything that was going on mm-hmm. um, and like your hormones and everything and all that. I'm sure like obviously moms out there, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. But um, at the time, I didn't really even know what that was. So it was kind of just like man I feel like I'm doing this alone and I think we can all agree that that is not a normal first year for a parent and for a child so it was like okay well none of my friends understand like everybody's had normal kids or whatever like you want to call it they you know get to stay home they don't have to go to the doctor every single week or every couple of days they don't have to see every specialist in town And so I was just like, well, weekends aren't enough. I mean, I need like more support and um, I'm not like the biggest and best communicator either. So it was like hard for me to just go to him and be like, okay, what I need. So I need more from this. What can we do about it? Yeah. Yeah. And I just sat there and I could have taken it one way, which I know probably a lot of husbands would where they're like, if they were in my position, they would say, well, what do you mean? Yeah. I'm here. I'm working. I'm supporting. I'm working. I'm supporting. We're making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, I got employees and obligations. Uh, you know, you don't have to work. You're at home. Uh, I'm not working. We. I, I could have easily said something like that. But, um, you know, I. this has always been our relationship. Is like when your relationship is built on faith in God and 
you know, the Bible tells us to love one another and serve one another. And, you know, in marriage, it's about submitting to one another. Mm -hmm. Um, if my wife tells me she's feeling that way, regardless of maybe how I see it or the world might see it, I have to really take it seriously and say, okay, I mean, if that's how she feels, how can I remedy the situation? Mm -hmm. And so I started a thing called work from home Wednesdays. Man, where, that was famous. That was legendary. Yeah. And I, I don't <laughs> even know why I was just like, you know what, whatever, I'm going to work from home Wednesday then. And I'll hang out with James and I'm going to ease whatever I can for whatever she's going through. Mm -hmm. If Because I, I don't understand it, but I'm going to ease it and I'll figure out how to make this work. Um, on top of that, I should add, and I forgot about this too. I didn't realize I was also probably sleep deprived because mm -hmm. I was trying to, you know, make things easier on Mindy. So every night James would wake up. I always took it. I took um, the night shift probably his entire first year of life. I know. Um, you killed it. You guys watched. I mean, he so he couldn't breastfeed. So I had to pump. So I would be pumping. And I'm just so tired of pumping like every three hours to make sure that, you know, he has enough milk. And, you know, just obviously going through all of that, too. Ryan would wake up or you would wake up um, at 4 p.m. or not 4, 4 a.m. And you would take James to the theater, get his bottle heated up, and you guys would watch anime together mm -hmm. and fall asleep. And um, yeah, that was amazing, obviously. But uh, now he's addicted to TV. So that's probably <laughs> because of you. Probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, so like I said, 2019 was a very hard year for us in business and family and mm -hmm. marriage um, and everything else. But like Mindy said, even looking back at 2019, uh, I wouldn't look back and be like, man, we had so many problems or this or that. It was just like, yeah, these are, you know, things we're going to have to do. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. And I think that's like our <laughs> motto. Our marriage motto is just like, it is what it is. Like we just go with whatever situation that we go through together. And we're like, all right, well, yeah, nothing you can do about it. Let's just I'm not going to complain on. about it. I'm yeah. not going to. We don't ever do that. So we just we're like, all right, well, we're together and. There's no poor me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think 2019 was definitely our hardest year of marriage. And then, you know, we go into 2020 with COVID. And I felt like we were well prepared for that because we had just gone through a hard year. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh, this is simple, dude. It seemed pretty light. Yeah. <laughs> honestly. Um, and I don't like want to, you know, put that on anybody else's situation. Obviously, everybody had a different take on 2020. But yeah, coming from that year of what we went through with James, I mean, we, even I still believe this now, from now until we die, like we can literally survive anything. Yeah. Yep. I agree. So we go into 2020. Um, and let me actually say this before I talk about 2020. Uh, 2019 is essentially where I came up with The Wealthy Way. Um, going through this taught me that, hey, you know what? No matter what kind of money I make, if I don't spend time with my wife and my son, you know, my son came close to dying twice. And I just remember praying during that time, like, God, if there's anything I can do or give up, I will give it up, you know, like trying to barter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I'll give up flipping houses. I'll give up anything. And it just occurred to me as he pulled through, like, man, you know, this business stuff, making money and all these things, it's not like the only thing. And it set the framework for what I wanted to do. And, you know, eventually I created, you know, this acronym called RAISE, which was the first mm -hmm. version mm -hmm. of the wealthy way during that time. It I was, forgot about that. Yep. Standing for relationships, assets, intellect, spirit, and exercise. And that was the first version of like, hey, let's live a complete life. And so that was, if you ever watch my first YouTube video um, of me touring my house flip, I have a shirt that says raise because mm -hmm. that's what it was. Um, and then, you know, in 2020, uh, I think it was 2021, I created the raise planner that people used and it was great. Mm -hmm. um, and then it eventually became the wealthy way as I realized as I refined the idea. Mm -hmm. Are we going to skip our daughter's birth? 
you know, she's around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're moving to 2021. Okay, so we'll no, just no. skip Olivia. <laughs> no, I was, it just got me thinking since we're on the Wealthy Way podcast. The Wealthy Way essentially originated from this 2019 season of our lives. I never thought that way until... Yeah. Tw- like, I always personally just naturally enjoyed not only focusing on work and trying to be great at all these aspects of my life. But mm-hmm. 2019 really sealed the deal for me. Yeah. Being a father and also seeing all these other entrepreneurs struggling with these things. And I'm like, dude, this ain't what it's about, guys. Yeah. Well, you guys are all stressed out and anxious over this dumb crap, mm-hmm. you know? Well, and I feel like that's why um, it's worked so well up to this point because it's not just something that you created out of thin air. It's something that we've lived to the core from even before I knew you, you know, you've lived that way and I've lived that way. And it's something like whether the wealthy way word didn't come about until that point. Um, it's just how you've gotten to that point. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, so it's not something that's just like a gimmick of what you've created, but it's something that you've truly lived and proven out to be successful for literally every person, whether you're of faith or not. But like, it's, you know, a model that every single person can follow and it'll benefit your life. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, we go into 2020 um, and, you know, obviously COVID's happening and that stuff. You're pregnant again. You got pregnant right after. Mm-hmm. My kids are 17 months apart. Yep. So, yeah. And I'm not still not sure why we did that, but. Here we are. <laughs> we <laughs> and did Olivia, it. Olivia also came a month early, mm-hmm. but thankfully she didn't need to do NICU or anything. She was good. Yeah. Um, but it was during this time I wanted to be an influencer. Man, Tell that's just about that. wild because so I love I have loved YouTube for a long time, and I we've even made like a couple videos. I think I put them in the archive, and I, if not, I will after this episode, so that nobody goes and watches them. But um, I just loved YouTube. I loved watching other people, you know, what do whatever. And I remember we made some videos like during baseball of us traveling, you know, just like, and I, that's kind of where I started editing and whatnot. And every time I would watch YouTube, whether it was like at home after teaching, it was kind of like a time for me to wind down. And so I would watch YouTube on my phone and Ryan would give me crap every time. You're like, how do you watch an hour of YouTube or why are you watching that or what are you watching? You would like crapped on it for so long. And then 2020 comes around and he's like, babe. I think YouTube's like, it's going to be it. I'm (laughs) like, you have got to be kidding me because had you listened to me to make YouTube five years ago, we'd have 20 million subscribers. Yeah. (laughs) But um, he has to find his own way. You know, I let him just come back to me at some point, even though, you know, our first date, I had to, you know, yeah. I will trickle remember. back to you or yep. sorry, crawl back to you, as you would say. It was a literal crawl. Yeah. After every uh, everything else that you've come to, I just realized that you kind of have to find your own way. Even though know, a lot of times you can hear the same thing over and over again. But until you and your heart decide you are passionate about doing that idea and Absolutely. you want to, you're not going to do it. Right. Yeah, like I could sure. tell everyone YouTube's great. And if you're you don't want to do it. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. Even if you not. believe me that it's great. You're mm-hmm. like, OK, I see why it's helped you. Yeah. If you're not passionate about it, you're not going to do it. No, it's not for everybody. So but um, yeah, you found your way. And I mean, in my opinion, your first videos were fire. But, they are you the know, best. <laughs> Mindy edited my videos. Uh, no shade to the editing team because I love them so much. <laughs> yeah. But if you see the first one, she made fun of me and all this. There's a lot of bloopers and. Stuff. I just I love making fun of you, so I think it was just easy to. It was very easy. To they do might that. be scared of making fun of me. But the reason I edited was because, um, yeah, Olivia tried to come early, and so I was put on bed rest actually the last two and a half months, and that was rough. Um, and I didn't know what to do with my time, and that was the same time he wanted to do YouTube, and we didn't have any a team of editors or anything like that, and so I was like, well, I know how to edit. And um, I love doing that. I love being creative and doing all that stuff. And he was like, okay, well, here's a video talking about the PPP loan or whatever (laughs) it was. Yep. (laughs) And um, I sat through and edited quite a few videos of, you know. You made the thumbnails too. Yeah, I made the thumbnails. I was a one woman show at that point, but I also had a lot of time on my hands. Yeah, it's funny because you were on bed rest. So we we took the leaf on a dining table Mm -hmm. and 
put it over like a reclining chair and it created like a, a little, tabletop. Yeah. And we put the MacBook on top of it yeah. so I can put my keyboard and like yeah. the, not not a MacBook laptop. Like no, a like an actual computer. 27 inch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I needed that to edit. So um, but I loved editing and doing all that kind of stuff. So that was no problem for me. Yeah. The hard part was making you funny. That was really hard. That is always hard. That is always <laughs> I hard. I feel for the editors now because... That's why they can't do it. No, they don't get your jokes and I just need to My tell them... My jokes just come off just dry, dry and just, it just goes over everyone's head, babe. You're I'm just get, way smarter than everybody right. and... That's you what know, I'm going to go with. No one understands your humor. It's just top notch. So. It's just... <laughs> but if you do laugh, that means you're smart. That's so... <laughs> So basically, you know, you you help me do this. Um, it obviously works out, leads to all this stuff and more businesses. <laughs> How do you think our lives changed since then? Our lives are wild, babe. It's just, um, it's crazy because... Honestly, the most time I really remember the change or like how wild the journey is, is whenever I go to the masterminds actually. Uh-huh. And there's one person that's there and it's like, hey, remember when it was like 12 people in the Flamingo office? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we got a taco truck and it was like a couple hours and it was literally 12 people in this small room. And that was the first ever mastermind. And then it's like I walk into, you know, a huge ballroom of 300 plus people and it's like. Okay, that's when I really can understand the scope and see how far we've come. It's been wild. It's been crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. It's been fast too, I feel. Very fast. Life moves fast. Life does move fast. So what are some of the things, you know, you, <laughs> people smiling? <laughs> <laughs> people obviously hear the journey now of how we got to where we're at today. I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. what are some of the most annoying things that I do? <laughs> like, what is it just in our marriage? You're like, dude, this guy... I, we He's don't have time for all the things, babe. There are so many. Yeah. Um, just about like being a wife to an entrepreneur or the the You could just say peeves. me specifically, <laughs> sure. Just the, the annoying things that I do. It's funny because the annoying things that you used to do, either I have just decided to ignore it because <laughs> there's no point in changing you or I've just like got accustomed to what you do. Um, recently... You know, so along like and you would know this, too, is that I used to get really bothered by how he eats. And I don't <laughs> I feel like there's a vlog you just did of you eating. Yeah, it was me. And it's Express. horrendous. It was I'm cringing so hard when I um, see that. But I think um, I've just ignored it so much <laughs> up to this point. I'm like, you are who you are. I've tried so hard to teach you some like etiquette and <laughs> yeah, with that with eating. Um you know, but it doesn't even bother me anymore. Um, I think now that's a good question. Um, I think the number one thing is that you are, um, what do we say when we're at home? You're not careless, but you're. It's not even clumsy. I think it's just more so careless. It maybe yeah. No, 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 you're right. It's not I used to call you clumsy, but you're not clumsy, you're careless. That's what it is. Cuz you have tunnel vision to whatever you're doing that you don't care about anything else around you. And so like It's called focus. <laughs> Some people would call this carelessness or tunnel vision. Some would call it extreme focus. Uh-huh. Um yeah, it's he's so extremely focused that like literally nothing around. He's not aware of anything like around him. He's just like if this is the destination, I'm going to get there and this is I'm like, doesn't matter what else, what's around. And so what happens is, you know, like just something off the top of my head is like when we're walking through the um, casino. Okay. He will cut people off like left and right. <laughs> and I'm just behind him, like giving people puppy dog eyes. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm mouthing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> because he just, he doesn't see it. And I, I like people just have to stop because he just walks right in front of them. <laughs> and I'm like so embarrassed. <laughs> I have to just apologize for you, but you have no idea. And you still won't because you'll just, you're ready to go <laughs> wherever you need to go. You know what was funny was, <laughs> you know, because we do date night every Friday. And so we'll usually go to the casino and go to like a nice restaurant. Yeah, it happens every Friday, guys. I have to go through this. <laughs> yeah, so... You know, usually I get recognized every time we go out. And as I started to get recognized more, 
I would start thinking in my head. I'm like, okay, I got to probably have better manners. And <laughs> like, people are looking at me in public for sure. And if that's if this many people actually say hi, how many people see me mm-hmm. and don't do it? And I can tell they just look at me all. A weird. lot of people, yeah. A lot of people yeah. will just stare. Yeah, and yeah. and they won't do anything. No. And I started to think, and I'm like, man, I need to really be more polite and just be on my A game all the time. Yes. And then I started to think, no, I don't. <laughs> who cares? No wonder you haven't changed. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, who cares? Like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, I I think I always tell you, I'm like, you need to have a little bit more compassion. You need to be aware of other people's feelings and whatnot. And he's just like, meh. So, you know, <laughs> we're working on it, guys. We're working. Not even the Ryan Pineda is perfect. I know you thought so by his hair and his chiseled jaw, but there's a lot behind the scenes that I could just go on and on. But yeah. I think that's the number one thing at this point. Yeah, I I don't have very good manners for sure. And that just is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um what do you think it's like being married to an entrepreneur at this point? Like what advice do you have for women listening? Oh man, do you want the tea, the truth? <sighs> no, I'm just kidding. Um being married to an entrepreneur 90% of the time I'll say is it's fun. It's exciting. Um, it's just really cool experience to watch something start from an idea to, and see a full blown, you know, um, set of employees or just whatever it is, an event. Like it's, it's really wild. I I don't really think a lot of people actually get to experience that in their, and if they do, it's their entire lifetime. And for us, it's like, you know, what's funny now that you say that is um, we were having dinner with Justin, my producer and his love wife, you, Ashley, Ashley. Yep. love you. And he had brought that up because they were talking about it. And here's the weird thing is that people don't ever talk to me about me right. too much. I don't ever hear the conversations because I'm just like in my own world and Tunnel vision, guys. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know what people say. I do know what people say about me. It's not good. So <laughs> We don't read the comments. <laughs> yeah, I just do what I do. And, but, you know, to hear him talk about it, because, you know, Ashley would say something, he would say something, and I'd start to hear the conversation of, like, how people will talk about me and mm-hmm. perceive the things I'm doing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess that is kind of weird for norm like not normal people but just like it's majority of people yeah Yeah. it's just not normal yeah and he was basically saying the craziest thing is i'll watch ryan come up with an idea right there on the spot out of the blue Mm -hmm. and within 30 days it will already be executed and done and making money yep. and crushing and whatever. And yep. it'll just be done. It'll just be a machine at that point. Yeah. He's like, I've never seen anything like it. To your point, for me, I get a great idea and I get inspired. I'm like, all right, it's going down. Yeah. This idea is about to crush and we're going to do it. No, you're a doer. <laughs> like, I mean, if there was any person to represent that word, because I mean, you just like if you want something done, And even for me, and might be frustrating for you because you're like, oh, we'll do this and do this. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it whenever. Like, I'm a big procrastinator. So I'll just like, wait, I don't have the desire to get it done right there. But you, you have to get it done or it will just like consume you. So I feel like you don't let even let it get to that point. But, you know, you're if you see something that's going to be successful or just any whatever, make something work better. You're like, just do it do it right now like what i don't get it and i'm like with the other people i'm like eh we'll just do it later whatever yeah it's not urgent <laughs> no i'm like no 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 <laughs> this must get done right this moment yeah yeah for sure i was just you know we got austin in the back and you know we just got rid of the old studio from upstairs for mm-hmm. the ryan pineda show and you know as soon as we were done filming i i called up you know we gave we donated to my church you know i i hit him up. I'm like, are you guys ready to pick this thing up? Like, let's roll. Yeah. Let's get this out of my office. And then I already reorganized the office and I'm, I call up boss. I'm like, get this crap out of my office and get it down into the new studio. Like I want my office the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And feel good. I mean, you want your workspace. Yeah. But to... most people 
would yeah, like you know it'll yeah like if it happens it happens or however it'll happen it'll happen but you just like put it in place to where things are gonna things are gonna there. happen now but that's also i mean going back to like your question is just that's really what it's like to be with an entrepreneur too and i think a good entrepreneur that's true a good on that's uh, all i've had experience I, with so <laughs> a normal person entrepreneur a want we call them entrepreneurs oh yeah that's good are yeah, you know, this is the idea. All right, great. Yeah, they don't execute. The next day, what what happened to the? Oh yeah, you know, we're we're working on it. <laughs> I love that we're working on it. They're not doing anything. That would annoy me too, actually. Maybe that's why we we work so well together. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're a entrepreneur, okay, nobody knows they're a entrepreneur, but if you are somebody who has big <laughs> ideas and you never do them, you are a entrepreneur. And, and you can change that, but you can't be yourself still. See, there's the encourager. I I wouldn't have said that. I would be like, and you suck. Okay. Like <laughs> Well, not everybody can change it, but you for sure, you know, yeah, we you can have dreams and visions and everything, but you gotta do something about it. I mean, that's it's, just and you don't have is. to accomplish your dream tomorrow. That's right. the thing. Like you have to take the next step though. Whatever anything step one is mm -hmm. towards the dream, do that tomorrow. Literally tomorrow. Because there's always a step one, right? Because let, let's just say you're going to go start a brand new business and you want to launch it in 30 days, okay? There's always a step one that can be done tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You got to go set up the LLC. Yeah. You got to go buy the domain name. You got to think of the brand. All right, great. Okay, these are all the steps done. All right, step two. All right, I got to go hire this guy. Like, mm -hmm. it's just literally step yeah. by step. You're not going to have the entire business tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an evolution. And I think for us, we're coming up on nine years of marriage and... It's been a whirlwind of different things and we'll continue to do different things. We'll continue to, you know, vacation, start new businesses, enjoy being parents, enjoy being husband and wife, enjoy serving at the church, enjoy giving, social, like, I enjoy all of it. I wouldn't change my life for anything. Mm -hmm. Same. The only thing I might do is play pro golf. <laughs> That's a whole nother thing, guys. <laughs> You're just on. On to the next, I don't even know. I just like really hard things. Yeah. Like challenges. You do. And then you want to like be the best at them and excel. So yeah. you're, I will say you're working, you know, really hard to um, play some something. Yeah. There's actually not even a reason. Yeah. Like it's not even, <laughs> I don't know why. I, I just enjoy it. It's a hobby. But uh, anyways, well, I think this was a great op episode. I think uh, people really are going to resonate with this. I'll let Hopefully. your I'll let your manager know. You know, <laughs> I'll send you the we'll, bill. Well, we'll have you back on. What was this good enough that you would come as a guest co-host? Oh, interesting. You never asked me that. Um, yeah, I mean, this was really fun. I wasn't like I didn't feel nervous at all. Maybe it's just because it's you and me talking, but it's always fun to um you know go through our journey together i think that it's wild and hopefully it's fun to listen to obviously but mindy i am <laughs> thankful that you came today thanks, people got babe. it so thanks for having me i had a good time um yeah i hope i get invited back yeah we'll, we'll see, see. <laughs> we'll see hey i hope you enjoyed that podcast thanks for making it to the end the good news is i've got another one that i know you're gonna like and all you gotta do is click it right here linking it right here. All you got to do is just click it and you're going to see this new episode that you're going to love.